Well, gentlemen, the dream has come true. Hmm, and not just for Republicans. Imagine doing that to a beautiful bottle of booze. Yeah, that was fun. That was fun. That was freaking fun. Hey, everybody, I didn't know you were there. Yes, I did. <laughs> Let me get my notes. My notes. Oh, my gosh. Ah. Oh. Moving around. Hey, everybody. Let me let me wipe my eyes. Uh, my eyes have a tendency, which is weird. You probably know this. Even when I'm watching a movie that I'm not laughing at, or I'm not intense with, my eyes just tear when I'm watching television. It could be a weird diabetes thing. Who knows? Uh, I mean, I can see or see fine, but. Or I could just be really over, over, overly emotional. And even something that I just have a great time watching. My eyes tear. I, I don't know. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition. A uh, long-awaited. Well, not long-awaited. It's just been a while since I've done another Matt Hell Monday. And um, there are four of these movies, folks. Four of these movies. And I just finished the second one. The the one that came right after, uh, what was the last one? The Silencers, I believe. Which I had a great time with. Uh, this I had an okay time with. This isn't one of the better ones. Um, I'm going to have to rank them all at the end of which one I like. I'm all just rubbing and scratching myself. Which one I like uh, the best, which, you know, uh, rank them. And this one was, it started out really kind of cool, and then it was kind of like, mm, and then And then it kind of grew a little bit near the end, and, and it was, I was like, okay, it was all right. Um, it's not, it's not my favorite. I'll say it's not my favorite. Although, although, be quiet, my loins. Be quiet. Um, and Margaret. Oh. And frickin' Margaret. You know, the one thing I guess I can say about these Matt Helm films is, one, you know, they all took place in the 60s, in the late 60s, when I was just really, you know, I was like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, by the time I saw them. And, of course, the loins were pretty damn active. And every frickin' female in all these movies were just... Should I be watching this? Mom, Dad, should I? No, I wouldn't even ask them. I would just watch them. And um, I was like, okay. I didn't get all the jokes. I didn't get all the innuendos. But um, I was just really, uh, I was like, okay, I'm attracted to that. That, that, look at all that skin. Oh, I've never been to Minnesota. Well, you're there now and it's mighty cold, so let me see those goosebumps. Oh, good girl. Now, a little to the left. I want to catch you right. 
near Duluth. Well, that's my best feature. All right, now you just lower your left arm, because we don't want to hide the Twin Cities. Um, anyway, Murderer's Row! The second Matt Helm film, filmed in 66, is it? Yeah, 1966. I was... Frick, I was... <laughs> I was seven years old when this movie came out, and probably by the time it came out on television, I was about eight or nine, um, or ten. And, um, yeah, yeah, I just uh, re-watched it. I have the Matt Helm collection, the Lounge collection, which is a fantastic DVD set. And I think I said this in the last uh, Matt Helm movie uh, uh, review, that... I cannot wait, and why are they waiting, uh, not putting these on Blu-ray in high def? Uh, they're, they're so fun. They're so, they, they capture the time so perfectly, and they're so tongue-in-cheek fun. Uh, parodies, not really parodies in the way like Airplane uh, is or anything like that, but of the of the Bond films and of uh, that time, the '60s, the late '60s were not only were they monster uh, oriented, you know, with the monsters and Adams family and the big monster crave and all the Aurora model monster models and things like that and creature features and showing all the Universal classics. They were also the big spy boom. Um, Thanks to uh, James Bond, the Bond films, uh, you know, Matt Helm came out and uh, Get Smart on television and A Man from Uncle and all these other spy type things. Um, but I love the Matt Helm films and Dean. You, you can't, you can't not love Dean Martin, man. Dean Martin plays this, this character so well. With all these little innuendos and all these little quips, which which it just fits perfectly, and then the music, not the score, but but every once in a while there'd be a song that he sings that fits in with whatever situation he's in. There's an old spinning wheel where my head is. Can't remember last night, what a crime But I'm feeling so rotten this morning Must have had me a wonderful time Ah, oh, it's nothing like fresh orange juice. So let's, let's get into, um, let's get into Murderer's Row. Uh, of course, you have Matt Helm, Dean Martin, and you got Anne frickin' Margaret. Mm. Um, <laughs> you got Carl Malden. Carl Malden from the streets of San Francisco. <laughs> You know, with Michael Douglas, Streets of San Francisco. You got Carl Malden as the bad guy. And he's kind of teamed up with a, a femme fatale uh, by, played by uh, Camilla Sparve, who I'm not too familiar with. I, I didn't write the character names down here. I just wrote the actors' names. And Tom Reese. Tom Reese is kind of like the, the Jaws of this movie. Uh, he doesn't have metal teeth or anything. He's nowhere near uh, a stature or as good as Richard um, Keel was. But he's got a, you, you know, I call him see-through head. He, he's got this thing on his head that you can kind of see in. So I call him like window head. You mind turning off your head? 
That's better. I take it back. Turn it on again. Shut up! He's not mechanical, but he's got something there. But according to IMDV, he's called Ironhead. And don't ever let me do that again. Yeah, he's like the heavy. He's he's the one that, um, you know, captures Helm and beats him up, and he's the big heavy guy. Um, oh, and James Gregory makes his reappearance as uh, McDonald, which is pretty much the Q, not the Q, the M. Of, as opposed to the Bond films, he's the M of the uh, Matt Helm films. He's the one that puts him on the missions. He actually plays a split. He also plays Q, uh, like a Q character because he does give him the gadgets. And in this movie, he does have a few gadgets. He's got like a harmonica that <laughs> he could listen. It, the, the sides open up and he can put it on a wall and he can eavesdrop on what's going on in the next room. And and the main thing that they use a lot in this movie is he's got a delayed gun. He's got this gun that he could shoot and then he counts down from five and then it shoots. The story pretty much uh, is very simple, as with most of these. Uh, uh, there's a scientist that is kidnapped, a scientist who develops this ray, this 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 heat ray, sonic ray, very similar to Revenge of the Pink Panther. I think it was Revenge of the Pink Panther when Herbert Lom's character had that ray that would disappear buildings but this ray in this movie would just destroy everything and in the very beginning you know they have this mock model set where they're trying to uh, test it and the main plan is to destroy Washington DC and uh, that's the whole thing of this they kidnap they kidnap this this scientist and they're pretty much trying to torture him to give him the full the full specs, the full plans on this machine that can destroy Washington, D.C. And throughout the way, Matt Helm meets up with Anne frickin' Margaret. Who's the daughter of this scientist? And, um, and she uh, tags along throughout the end of the thing. And, oh, God. Um... <laughs> there, there's a scene when he first meets her, and it's in a dance club, and the music is actually by a is it Boyce and Hart, Tommy Boyce and or just Tommy Hart and something Bo Boyce and Hart, who did most of the early music from the Monkees, and uh, they're the actual they perform as the band in this, and they're in this weird dance club. I wasn't I was gonna say disco club, but it's not a disco club, but or discotheque, but it's a big dance club. And boy, uh, I'll show it. She is dancing up a storm. She's dancing up a storm and Dean Martin's little quips and his reaction is freaking hilarious. <laughs> You'll break something. Up, up, up. Woo! It's like directing traffic. No! No? Woo! And then later in the movie, when when he finds out she was giving this given this brooch that's going to explode he pretty much speeds his way to the club to try to stop her or try to save her and of course just like in the last movie he just rips her clothes off and throws it and it blows up and then you know uh, she's in her underwear and <laughs> it's just like anyway um and there's some really kind of cool little bit there with Frank Sinatra uh, as a kind of a cameo. 
and that's all I'll say. Maybe I'll show it. Um, so yeah, so so and then you know they they get to an island and uh, they're captured and Helm tries to save the day and save the scientist and save Washington D.C. as usual. And this is the first movie that that I remember where they actually used a hovercraft. Um, I I remember in the seventies, the late seventies there was a big deal about a hovercraft. I mean, that was going to be the future. The future wasn't going to be flying cars. It was going to be, everybody was going to be in hovercrafts. And you can go over water, and you can go over land, and you can, you know, you, you're, you know. And this is this movie has a lot of that. In fact, the ending scene of this, where there's a fight between uh, Helm and Ironhead, and Helm and the Carl Malden character is very reminiscent of the uh, Bond film Thunderball. And also the hovercraft, I remember another earliest time I've ever seen one was in uh, Doctor Who, or early Doctor Who, John Pertwee episode called The Sea Devils uh, with the Master. There, there, there was a uh, hovercraft in there, and that, that was pretty much very showcased. Um, and then there was a Jackie Chan film where he broke his foot jumping from land to the hovercraft, and that's a whole other thing, too. I think that was Rumble in the Bronx. I think that was Rumble in the Bronx. Not too, too, too sure. <laughs> and frickin' Margaret. I was gonna say, the second time that, that you see her dancing when Helm comes in to rip the the clothes off of her to get rid of the bomb brooch. She the the scene in that in this movie is so intense. She's dancing so crazy, so bizarre that that I I I just I just had to do this and add this music because it seemed to fit. Another thing with the hovercraft is that that you know it it also reminded me of uh, the James Bond film. Uh, there's there's a scene in here where he's he's trying to get to Anne Margaret, who has the bond the the bomb brooch. He escapes from the the prison, and he steals the hovercraft, and then he eventually brings it up on the land and there's everybody on the beach kind of looking at this hovercraft and he's driving it down the street how he finds out what club she's in i have no idea but he eventually gets to the club and that's very reminiscent of moonraker i believe it was moonraker uh, but it was it wasn't a hovercraft it was a gondola 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 uh, and and it floated over the the land and everybody was like looking and he was throwing no, he wasn't throwing fish out of it. That was Spy Who Loved Me, where he had the car. But no, I think it was Moonraker where he had the gondola that floated, and it went over the land, which I don't care for Moonraker. Sorry, Bond fans. But anyway, um, yeah, so so I, I think that's it. I think uh, that's all I'm going to say. Um, th this was a, a fun experience. It really was an in a really cool little experience. Again, uh, re-watching this film, which I haven't seen in so long because it was, it was you know, there, there are the other Matt Helm films that I kind of like more. And this one, uh, not so much, although, and frickin' Margaret, man. Don't you think we should be introduced first? Hey, 
It's old Roger D on Channel Downstar with a uh, Matt Helm Monday, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you're interested, pick up the lounge set if it's still in print. All four Matt Helm movies starring Dean Martin and a plethora of beautiful women uh, with a 60s martini spin. And, um, yeah, this was Murderer's Row. We'll see you in the next Matt Helm Monday. All right, everybody, have a great day. Bye-bye. Ambush, let's get out of here.